Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Wertheimer and I'm a music reference specialist at the Library of Congress. Because our virtual concert series will feature violinist Augustin Hodelich on October 21st performing Caprices by Niccolo Paganini, I wanted to share some music division resources about the composer as well as how we received them. Paganini was a violin virtuoso and composer born in Genoa, Italy in 1782. He also played guitar and viola. First, I want to show you what his musical handwriting looks like. The music division has a facsimile, or a copy, of Paganini's manuscript for the 24 Caprices. The original is held in the Ricordi archives in Milan. This is a facsimile of Caprice number no. five in A minor. And this is the facsimile of Caprice number no. nine in E major. Both of these Caprices are part of the concert series in October. Now, the special thing about a facsimile is that it's as much as like the original as possible. So you can see that you can see that there are the edges of the pages here, and it's also printed to be the same size. So it is almost like we're touching the real thing. Paganini completed the violin caprices in sets between 1802 and 1817. This is a first edition of the 24 Caprices, published around 1820 to 1825. We can see here the imprint, Milano. Here's the publisher, Cordy. And we have the plate number, number 403. What's special about our copy in the Library of Congress is that we can explore provenance, or the history of ownership. This particular copy, in 1857, was owned by Otto und Louis Lussner. They were violinists, and they came from a family of musicians. Their father, Inez Peter Lussner, was also a violinist, and he led the boys in a family string quartet. Otto must have held on to it as an adult, because here is Otto's personal stamp and his signature. Otto stayed in Breslau and taught music theory and violin. Now the majority of our primary sources related to Paganini are part of the Gertrude Clark Whittall Foundation Collection, which was established here in 1941. Mrs. Whittall purchased the Paganini materials, collectively called the Mai Bang Han Collection on Niccolo Paganini. In 1944, from the estate of Mai Bang's widower, Charles Hahn. The Paganini Collection is so special. It has music manuscripts, artwork, letters, posters, account books, and more. But what's just as special as the contents of the collection is its provenance, or its history of ownership. And the Library of Congress has special resources that match up almost every step of the collection's way. So let's start at the beginning with Paganini himself. He gathered his papers and letters in his lifetime. And after he died in 1840, his family sold his personal papers and letters in 1910. And then the music manuscripts were sold by the family separately. So we already have a separation of two very large groups of material. So from 1910, to 1927, the personal papers were in the possession of a German dealer, Joseph Baer, and he was based in Frankfurt. Baer granted access to these papers, a man named Dr. Julius Kapp, who wrote a biography of Paganini using those papers in private possession. This is the Music Division's 1913 first edition of Julius Kapp's biography of Paganini. And here is our imprint. Paganini's papers contain notebooks and account books. One such notebook is here, and it's known as the famous secret red book because the cover is red.
This notebook in particular documents Paganini's European concert tours and even includes names of people he met like a composer and a pianist named Frederick Chopin. It also includes the places he stayed, how much he got paid for his performances, and who was special enough to get comp tickets to those performances. I have the Red Diary open to a page that at the top says Inventario del Archivio de NP. In other words, an inventory or a catalog of his papers. This inventory is a really helpful resource in order to research what was in Paganini's possession at the time. But it connects to Julius Capp's biography because this page was reproduced as an image in the biography. Julius Capp's biography wasn't the first biography of Paganini. The first was in 1830, written by Georg Harris. He was Paganini's secretary from June 7th to July 2nd, 1830, and traveled with him in Germany. Here is the music division's first edition of Harris's biography of Paganini. Here we are with the imprint. And there's his name as the author in a glorious German Fraktor font. And this is the account book that Harris kept for Paganini during that tour. It includes fascinating details like costs and vendors for food, lodging, laundry, <laughs> postage, and even a barber. So this leads us to the woman who assembled all of these materials and more to begin with. Maya Bang Han. She was a violinist and violin pedagogue who lived from 1879 to 1940. She was born in Norway and emigrated to the US in 1919 after studying with the violinist Leopold Auer in St. Petersburg. She also naturalized as an American citizen. The Paganini materials also contain invaluable information about her and her career and her life that other music division materials complement. Let's start with some items from the music division's general collections that tell us more about Maya Bang. This is book four of her five-part Maya Bang violin method based on the teaching principles of Leopold Auer from 1920. In the supplement, published in 1923. We have this beautiful portrait of Maya Bang posed with her violin. This supplement also contains a dedication to her parents. In 1931, she published the Maya Bang Violin Course for class instruction in public schools or individual lessons in four parts. Here are two of the four books from the Music Division's general collections. We received these along with the Maya Bang Violin Method through deposits in the US Copyright Office. In between these two publications, Maya Bang filed a patent with the US Patent Office for a mechanical device to help children with their technical facility in learning stringed instruments. Here is blank letterhead of Maya Bangs held within her collection of Paganini materials. This actually gives us quite a bit of information about her. We have an image of her, and this portrait definitely looks a few years later than her 1920s portrait with her violin. We also have her little slogan here, Recognized World Authority on Violin Pedagogy. We also have her address where she lived in New York City. The margin contains a list of her publications, all here. She comes off as quite impressive. Maya Bang built her collection on Paganini, not because it was a hobby 
or because she was just a fanatic collector. She had a goal. She wanted to write a biography of Paganini the year of his centenary in 1940. Unfortunately, she died in 1940, the year of Paganini's centenary. But because of valuable papers within her collection on Paganini, we can figure out where she left off and where her thought processes were going. Let's start with this book jacket that she designed for the biography. I love that it's 3D. You can really imagine a hardcover book being inside of this cover. There's a lot going on here. We have the spine, we have the title by Maya Bang, and there was going to be a portrait of Paganini here. The cover has the title Paganini. She indicates here a very specific portrait for the cover. If you look in closely, it says Johannot's picture. Well, what does that mean? Well, Maya Bang's collection on Paganini contains a watercolor by the German-born French artist Tony Johannot. This watercolor dates around 1830, and we can still explore this idea of provenance through this watercolor. Here we have, in purple letters, MB inside a black circle. We find that little insignia all over these materials, and it indicates Maya Bang's ownership. Now, what's going on in this watercolor? Paganini is serenading a lady in her boudoir. And it just so happens that it's Napoleon Bonaparte's sister, Elise. Um, she was also known as Maria Anna Bacchiocchi. And we can see that the room is illuminated by candlelight. So it's a pretty interesting picture to have on the cover of a Paganini biography, but it really speaks to all of the legends surrounding Paganini and his cult of personality and his mystique. Maya Bang's own handwritten catalog of the Paganini materials is a goldmine of information about provenance and gives really valuable details about each item in her collection. Every item has a number and we can learn where she got it, when she got it, and who she got it from. You can see that the pages are black ink on paper. And these three holes indicate that at some point it was in a three ring binder of sorts. The page that I have her catalog open to is about how she acquired manuscripts for Paganini's guitar quartets. Remember I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that Paganini's family separated Paganini's personal papers and the music manuscripts. Here we learn that Maya Bang obtained the guitar quartets in 1929. And the guitar quartets are for guitar, violin, viola, and cello. And we have four of them here in the Library of Congress. One of them, number 14 in A major, is here. This is the guitar part. They're in four separate parts. Each instrument has its own part. There's no score. So we have this beautiful blush colored cover. It's green fabric ribbons. Here it says 14 to indicate quartet number 14, guitar. If we open it, once again, here we are with provenance. We have a really distinct watermark here in the cover. This is the Library of Congress's stamp from when we received it in 1944. Up here, we again see the initials of Maya Bang in purple letters inside the black circle. And if you look very, very closely, there's a faint stamp here. It's an oval, like a gray or a, gr or a lavender color. And this title page is the handwriting of Paganini. So my job for all of you out there, let's see if we can work together and match up information in Maya Bang's catalog and maybe figure out what this stamp, this very faint stamp in the corner is. And maybe we can figure out or match up and confirm even more 
places that these manuscripts journeyed over time. Now, what I will end with is letting you know that this collection isn't just about a violin virtuoso, that it isn't only an opportunity to find out about the amazing women at the center of how we have these materials, Maya Bang and Gertrude Clark Whittall. It's also an opportunity for whimsy and taking a collection home with you. This is Paganini's recipe for ravioli. Once again, here we are, we have markings of provenance, we have the purple MB inside the black circle. And remember I mentioned earlier catalog numbers. Right below the MB is the number 191. So you can use that to correlate with the catalog numbers. Now, if you're interested, you can try the recipe yourself by going to our blog in the Muse, and you can learn about how one of our staff members reconstructed the recipe on his own, although he left out the ingredient of calves' brains, which you may all choose to do as well. Remember, Niccolo Paganini may be a giant in the world of music, but there are two women at the center of the story of how his legacy lives on at the Library of Congress, Maya Bang Han and Gertrude Clark Whittle. Thanks for watching.